righteously so. I'm angry at religion. Do you know Jesus never got angry at a sinner? He never, he never showed disappointment and he never showed angry, anger. But where he did show anger was to the religious leaders of his day. And, and called them some things that we probably wouldn't call them today. Now, how, how does that affect us? All, all it does for me, it's, it says, how can we do a better job? What can we do to help people step into permanent lasting freedom instantly? Not wait a month, not wait two months, not wait three months. Um, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Uh, let's pull that up on the screen very quickly, and then we're going to get into some things. I want you to see this. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. And so here's the thing, um, Dr. Rachel Nelson, that's her name. Uh, she is experiencing freedom like never before. She is, she is in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So she just stepped into freedom like real quick. But, but there was a, a call and a purpose on her life to, 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 to expand this kingdom, to affect other people. She had influence. And so, and Satan wanted to hinder that influence. All right, now look at this. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Look at the next verse. And be not conformed to this world. Now, he is talking about a pattern of thinking that, that creates a pattern of believing, that creates a pattern of living. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Somebody say transformed. Transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, it's not just about how we think. Right thinking will produce right believing which will produce right living. Jesus came not to just transform what we believe, but to transform how we live. Because the whole reason is, that, and the transformation process and the way that we think and the way that we believe is that you may prove. Somebody say prove. And how, where do you prove it? In your life. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Jesus came. God wants, your father wants you to experience his perfect will in every area of your life. Which means what I've got to do is change the way that I think, change the way that I believe, and begin to step out and allow that to change the way I live my life. And so part of the shift here isn't just talking about what is it you're supposed to believe, but your believing will create right living. And so we live not because not, we're not trying to change ourselves externally. We're trying to, what we're doing is allowing the new nature that's on the inside of us to change how we live and the way we view things. Okay. So this morning I've been doing a series on first things first. And, and so uh, the Lord really just, I mean, he was very clear about this. Put this on my heart. We've been looking at Luke chapter 12 um, and where Jesus said, don't take thought for tomorrow. But before that, he had talked about the rich man that just stored up for himself and, and wasn't concerned about anybody else and then and wasn't able to affect those people around him. And, and so the Lord really put on my heart as I was having a conversation uh, with Pat Roll um, to, for us to, to do a little tag teaming this morning. There's, uh, there, there's some revelation here about how we need to approach our life, particularly in the area of our finances. And if we're going to seek first the kingdom of God, uh, so Pat, you can come on up. If we're going to seek first the kingdom of God, um, it's got to be in every area of our life. But now what we're, about to, what we're about to talk about isn't a prescription for what to do, but it is how we live our life based on who we are, see. And so there's a lot of things, particularly in uh, Galatians chapter 3. I, um, we're doing a series on Galatians on Wednesday night. It says, O foolish Galatians, who bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? And so we can have truth and we can believe truth, but we're called to obey the truth, see? And so, um, and starting next week, you don't want to miss what we've got going on next week. But what we're going to do is I'm going to start talking about the word of the kingdom, 
the word of the kingdom and the importance of the word of the kingdom in your life. I'm telling you, the Lord's given me all kinds of thoughts on that. So um, can, can y'all welcome Pat this morning as we, as we have a little discussion? We'll go to Genesis 1.1. It says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That was in the beginning. Genesis 1.26. I, I, I want to bring up some things where you know who you are, like Pastor Mark was talking about. If, if you don't know who you are, if you don't renew your mind, see your mind's your flesh part. Your spirit knows it all. It's just got to get to your flesh. You have to renew your mind for what the Spirit knows. Amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. Yes. If you're not getting Word in you, you're not learning nothing. That's right. Now, Genesis 1.26 says this, And God said, Let us make man in our image. After our likeness, let us make him have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowls of the air, the cattle, over the earth, and over everything that creeps on the earth. In 27 said, so God created man. Now, see, when he was saying, let us make man, he's talking to the Holy Ghost and Jesus. They're, they're having a discussion. They're making plans for what they're going to do. Yeah. And, and then 27 says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female. 28 is, and God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea the fowls of the air and over everything that moves on the earth dominion means have rule over tread down dominate that's what god told us to do that's why when Pastor Mark said all of creation longs for the manifestation of the sons of God, creation wants protection again. Because before Adam sinned, he protected the earth. And, and now that we've been redeemed, it's our job. You know, we've got all this power. But with power comes great responsibility that God's gave to us because he's That just reminds me of Romans 5, 17. For, uh, for by one man's offense death reigned, much more they which receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign. Shall reign. In life. In life. Through Jesus Christ. That How Jesus much Jesus came to restore original intent in creation. That's right. And that's where you have to think. That's the mindset you have to have. Okay, now let's go to New Testament, John 1.1. 1, 1. Now we already read in, in Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning, God. John 1.1 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the Word. Well, the Word was with God, the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life and that life was our light it was the light of men and what does it say about that and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not you want to renew your mind that that light is in you and when you walk in a room darkness leaves immediately and it doesn't know why it had to I did not read there that you had to tell it to go. It said it didn't comprehend, it didn't understand why it had to leave. But if you don't know who's in you, it ain't going to leave. You have to renew your mind to that. Then it says in John 1, 14, I'm going to jump down, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among men. And we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten Son, full of grace and truth, full of grace and truth. The Word is truth. Truth is God. Truth is Jesus. 
Now, everybody knows that the Bible is the Word of God, right? But see, this is also Jesus. Get that serious with it. Because when you just think it's the words, your head's thinking, well, it's words on paper. But no, it's the flesh and blood of the Word was made flesh. It is Jesus the Christ. That's and what that's, it says over in Hebrews chapter 4. It says that the Word of God is alive. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Jesus is called the living Word of God. See, and, and, and I just don't want you to think of it as just words on a paper. I want you to get really serious with it. Now, the, this is the way that, w that I've lived my life for the last 30 years. So what we're talking, I mean, I don't have to say what we're talking about proves the Word because the Word proves itself. <laughs> I, I don't prove it. Okay, now, Matthew six thirty three, and and Pastor Mark brought this up. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you. That word kingdom right there, when, when you look it up in the concordance, means royal power, kingship, dominion, rule, not to be confused with the actual kingdom, but the right and the authority to rule over a kingdom. Now, what did God tell Adam? Well, first it was a deal they was making. The Holy Ghost, God, and Jesus are talking. Let us make men like this, give them dominion. And then they turned around and did it. Now, the kingdom of God's within you. But you have to renew your fleshly mind to understand what's in you. Where that's the only thing that comes out of your mouth every time. Let me just jump imagination. in there for just a second. The, the renewing of your mind, it's not something that, that you do naturally. It's, it's something that happens spiritually. The Spirit of God will reveal as you read this word. Um, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it says that the Spirit of God has been given to us that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. And the things that have been given to us in the Spirit is not something that you understand with a natural mind. It's something that is spiritually discerned. That's the reason why you want to get born again. That's why you want to give your life to God. That's why you want to experience His life so that, so that the Spirit of God can begin to reveal these things. You, got, you know what's yours, but you'll never walk in what's yours until you know what's yours. Now, see, he's talking about the Word. Now, you know what we quoted already this morning during the service. If the Son, therefore, sets you, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. That's the one everybody knows. But see, there's a qualification for that that really doesn't get brought out that much. And just back yourself up a few. In 31, in chapter 8, if ye continue in my word, then you are my disciples, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you tr free. The, the Son's made you free. He's gone to the cross. <laughs> the curse is gone. But if you don't know the truth, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. You have to have the truth in you, not somebody's doctrine, what God says. Okay. Now let's go here. Mark 4.23 If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, this is Jesus talking, Take heed what you hear. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured unto you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. God is so good. He doesn't make you do stuff. He lets you put the measure on the Word. Wow. Now, you know, some 30, some 60, some 100. That's what he talks about when the sower sows the Word. Some of them apostles just say 100. That's the one I like. Some of them start at 100 and go down. I like 100-fold. I like 100%. But see, put the measure on the Word. 
and, and it says, to you that hear. It doesn't say everybody. Everybody thinks, no, it's, it's did you hear it? Oh, I heard that. I see that. I have eyes. You know, God knows you can see. Well, why does he say if you have eyes to see, then see? He wants you to see it. How do you see it? With faith. Starts with hope. You see it. Faith is substance. Hope ain't substance. That's why you've heard me say this is a book of reality to me. It's real. It's not hope anymore. I've never found where Jesus did any hoping. <laughs> he said it. He got it. And that's the mind you want to have in you. You know, it tells you in Philippians, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, though being made in the form of God, thought it not robbery. Now you got the Son of God robbing. He thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now, just study on that a while. Equal with God means you have creative power in your tongue, and you do. Let that mind be in you. That's how you think. That's your mindset. Well, the, the reason is, is the Bible says that we're sons of the Most High God. But not only that, he says that we are kings and priests unto the Most High God. Kings, kings don't walk around begging. Kings don't walk around looking for handouts. Kings are the ones that are decreeing. Kings are the ones that are ruling. And that's who he's created us to be. And Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Okay, now we're going to get into the message. <laughs> Matthew 6, 1. Take heed that you do not that 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 you do not your arm alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore when thou doest thine alms, when you give, we're, now, now I'm talking about money. Okay? Don't everybody leave. I'm talking about money. <laughs> I'm going to tell you how much God wants you to have it. And you don't have to try to get it. That's the part I'm going to tell you about. Because it just comes on you and you wonder, where did that come from? My whole life, the stuff that's around my life, I cannot tell you where it came from. It just is here. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites in the synagogues and in the streets. Now when they gave back then, they blew horns to let everybody know what they were doing. That they may have the glory of men, verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest thy alms, don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing. Now that's kind of hard to do, isn't it? Let your left hand sneak around your back, see if your right hand don't know it. It can't happen. But God wants you to give that way. Never touch the glory. Never touch it. God shows you what to do. Put something on your heart. Really, the nature, your nature is God's nature now. And you want to start thinking that. And, and, it's, and he doesn't tell you what to do. It's your nature to do it. It's called love. Well, that also reminds me of 1 Corinthians 1, where it says that in that part, though I give all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, it says if I don't do it in love, it profits me profits. nothing. And, and so it all goes back to purpose. This, the, the religious leaders were giving to be seen of men, and so they got what their, what their purpose for giving is. And, and one of the things that, that God wants to get into us is, is why, what's, what's that purpose? What's, what's the heart? You know, God so loved the world that he gave. Can we also, because of our new nature, 
seek first the kingdom of God, even when it comes to our finances, and, and have a, a giving mindset. I'm not just talking about giving to the church and to different ministries, but also to other people that need help. We, Jennifer and I have, have, have found other people that need help that we're able to, to do different things for, and we've made a decision to, 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 to give more than we've ever had before. And, and it seems, it's amazing, but all of a sudden now, we're in a position financially to be able to even do more. And I don't know how that happened except God, <laughs> you know. And we made a decision first to purpose in our heart to be like God and to love and to, and, 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 and to be a giver. And then all of a sudden, now the Lord has, has caused more seed to come into our life to be able to, to be blessed. So we, we want to make sure purpose is right. Yeah. We're, and we're going to grow there too. Now, uh, okay, verse 4 says, In the... That, that you're supposed to give your arms in, arms in secret, that your Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward you openly. Alms is money. It's food. It's donations given to the poor. It's just, it's just anything given. Now I want to say one thing. When you... Okay. When you give to the church or you give anywhere if the purpose that you give if you think to yourself well I'm going to give this and I'll get it off on my taxes anybody ever thought that <laughs> don't raise your hand when you thought that you just got your reward you just got it and, and I could okay I'll say it like this I know a fellow. I heard of a guy. His CPA told him he was giving 60% of his money to the church of what they brought in. He had a business. And his CPA was a good CPA. So he came to that man and he told him, you're giving too much. You can't use it all. The government only lets me use this much. And I could roll it over, but see, you're doing it again next year, and, and I can't use it. And that man told him that they was not given to get something from the government. They was given because it was their nature to give when they saw a need. See, the Word tells you that when you see a man need something, the Holy Ghost is talking, you see a man need a coat, don't tell him he needs a coat. He says to you, get him a coat. So that's the Holy Ghost trying to get a blessing to you. Because he showed, now he didn't show the guy next to you that that guy needed a coat. He showed you. Well, boy, that's when you jump in and you get that coat. And you don't think about it. Oh, well, I get off on, if, I, if I give to the Salvation Army, they're going to give me a paper and you get to write on there how much it was worth. Oh, boy. You need money that much, get another job. <laughs> okay. Now, you can claim it on your taxes. That's not what you we're saying. You can, I, yeah. I mean, yeah. Don't let that be your purpose. Now, now what we just read right there uh, about giving in Matthew. Let's go to Acts 1, Acts 10, 1. And let's talk about a man that gave. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the Italian band. Now, he's a centurion. He wasn't even Christian. He was one of the bad guys back then. A devout man, though, and one that feared God in all his house, which gave much alms to the people, and he prayed to God always. Earnest or sincerely, heartly, Completely devoted is what he was doing. Now it says, he saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, and an angel came to him saying unto Cornelius, when he looked on him, he was afraid, and, and then the angel says to him, fear not, and the Lord said, that your prayers and your alms 
have come up before me as a memorial. Now, how would you like to know that your giving and your praying is right in front of God's face? A mem you know what a memorial is. That's a pretty good deal, isn't it? I liked it myself. It works. Luke 6, 45. I'm, I'm bringing a bunch of scriptures that, that we lived that I'm trying to put a lot in you to help renew your mind to where we're going with the rest of this. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good. An evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart brings forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. Your heart is everything. Out of the abundance of the heart your mouth speaks. It don't say every now and then what's in your heart your mouth speaks. It says out of the abundance. Everything your heart thinks when you listen to somebody talk, you know how that person is. You, you can, I won't say judge them, you can make a record. Well, Jesus came to change hearts because yes. Proverbs 4 says, guard your heart with all mm. diligence for out of it flows or out of it springs the issues of life. Your heart determines your direction in life. In life, how you live, how you bless your kids. I, I won't get into covenant. I'll just talk about this. Well, I'd love to go a lot of ways. Now let's talk about giving. Deuteronomy 8, 18 says this. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto the fathers, as it is this day. Now, <clears throat> why did he say... He gives you the power to get wealth. Was it to drive a Lexus? To own a mansion? To have a bunch of money in the bank? No. Does he mind you having all that? No, he wants you to have all that. He just wants your intent to be so he can further his covenant. Let that be your first thought all the time. Now, his covenant is for you to have the car and the garage paid for, the house. That's his covenant. Because he told his forefathers he is going to bless them. But don't go there first. Go to God with it first. Any time. You're good. We're You're good. good. Okay. Yeah. Where are we at? Second Corinthians. Well, it's kingdom thinking. That's what we're kingdom talking about. Kingdom thinking. Kingdom thinking. That the Bible says in, John, in Luke chapter 12, Jesus said, Fear not, little flock, it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And that's all well and good. But the next verse actually says, so you can go and sell what you have and give to the poor. Why? Because the supply is coming from the kingdom. It's not, see, we, we've got we've to be thinking that what I have now isn't something that I've heaped up for myself, but rather that if I'm going to let my mind be transformed, then it's got to be reflected in my life so that I can improve. Back to Romans 12, what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God? You know, and, and some of you that are new is like, why, 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 why are y'all talking on giving this morning? I didn't come to this church to to hear about giving you know we don't it, besides the missions often we don't pass a plate here that's not the reason that we're doing this you know and thank god he supplies every need but um i have seen people live at the same level financially i have watched people in this church and and people that we're associated with not experience the perfect will of god in their life and it's because they've never been able to really let go with their heart and say i'm going to seek first the kingdom in every area including my finances Finances. So what I've determined to do is I have got to speak the truth of the Word of God so that people will step out and obey the truth so that they can experience freedom in their lives. We are not supposed to be in debt up to our eyeballs. We are not supposed to have to owe everybody. The Bible says, owe no man anything, but that resource comes from God himself. And so I'm, I'm not going to be concerned anymore about what people think motive is. I've, we've got to speak the truth of the word of God so people will experience real freedom in their life. It's kingdom thinking. It's kingdom living. 
See, it tells you in the Word that the birds neither sow nor do they reap. God takes care of them. Now that takes care of sowing, that takes care of giving to get, don't it? I mean, I got that settled. He says, uh, don't worry about what you wear. He says, don't worry about what you eat. Uh, matter of fact, he says, don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow's got enough problems of its own. <laughs> and, and says, if you seek first, now, now that's a word that a lot of the church don't understand what first means. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, who he's made you to be in all these things, all these cars, all these houses, all the material things that you need in this life. He knows you need them before you ask him. Like when he just said about it's God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. But right before that, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. He's telling you to look for something. And then he's going to turn around and tell you it's his good pleasure to give it to you. Yeah, but he just wants you to seek it. Just open it up and seek it. One time, he'll pour it out. He is looking for somebody to prove his word works in this earth. Come on. And that's in everything. Prosperity covers everything. It covers your protection Everything, not just money. My goodness, money's so easy to make. If you don't believe that, look what the government's doing. All they need is ink. <laughs> you don't need ink. That's not the way to do it, guys. <laughs> That's called counterfeit, and they will put you in jail for that. Oh, boy. Okay. All right, for sake of time, let's get into 2 Corinthians. I can't skip all that. Okay, 2 Corinthians 8.1. Moreover, brethren... 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. Verse that's one. where he's at. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in the great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. That's kind of telling you they didn't have no money, but they was givers. For to their power I bear record, ye and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreat that we would receive a gift and take it upon us, the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. Now, now what they're telling you there is that they don't have it, but they're going to give you what they do have, and it's just their passion to get it to you. Yay. And that's what, they're, that's what that church there, that group, that group. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord, and unto us by the will of God. So see, that they, they gave their thanks to God first. They gave to God first and then to them. Insomuch as we desire Titus, that as he begun also, he would also finish in you the same grace also. Now, you know, up there where I was talking, they're talking about giving money. Now, there's a lot of different levels of grace out there and the, the level we're talking about this grace right here is money and, and of course we're going to prove it to you in the word I'm not going to prove it to you the word's going to prove it to you therefore as you abound in everything even in faith and utterance and knowledge and in all diligence and in your love for us see that you abound in this grace also now, when it says this grace, there must be another kind and another kind. See, this is specific grace. Well, the Bible talks about the multifaceted grace of God. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, I believe it is. Can, can we pull that up real quick? I want you to see this. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Um, this is so important that we get a hold of this. And every man, as he's received the gift, and actually that's, that's, that's a gift out of grace. It's a, it's a grace that comes from God. It's the, it's the Greek word charisma, which comes from the word charis, which means grace. Even so, minister the same one to another. So as you've received 
this different grace, this different gift, minister that one to another as good stewards of the manifold bunch grace of God, the multifaceted, the multi-layered grace of God that what's been given to you, and then you can make a decision. I mean, he says here, let's go back to this uh, uh, again, right, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse, verse, um, uh, uh, verse 7, 2 Corinthians 8, 7, therefore as you abound, see, we, 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 we determine, you determine right. what you <laughs> abound in. You determine what's going to, what's important in your life. You determine where your passion is. You determine the, the areas of your life that you want to see God move in and the areas that you focus. And he says, so seeing that you abound in everything, like in faith. Man, we want to abound in faith. We want to believe God in every area of our life. And in utterance and in speaking the truth and the knowledge of Jesus, we increase. All of this comes in the knowledge of him. And he talks about all of these different things and also in all diligence. So these people were abounding in faith. They were abounding in utterance. They were abounding in knowledge. They were abounding in diligence and being persistent. diligent and being persistent. But he's, he's encouraging them. And he says, and also in your love, they were abounding there. But he says, also abound in this grace. Let all everything else be reflected in saying you're going to abound in the grace to be a giver, the grace to be a blessing to other people. See, these are mindsets. These are, if you have ears to hear, then hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Okay, then it says, grace. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. Verse 9 says, For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know? That though he was rich, yet for your sake. Wow. For he your sake. For, yeah, your sake. For us. For, for your me. sake. He became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. Now, we're, look, I'm still talking about money. This ain't Mark talking about money. This isn't Pastor. It's, just blame it on Pat. But it works. He took the curse of poverty so that you wouldn't have to live under the curse of poverty in your life. I mean, Jesus took all of that, took every bit of the curse sickness sin all of those things that would cause you to live in lack and that would cause you to have to live in debt he took all of that on himself became poor was our substitute so that we could turn around and have his riches have his life have his kingdom so we would never lack another day in our life right. again praise god forevermore all free did you just say all free? All free. That's the grace of God. Amen. What page was on? You were, Where was it? Right you, here. You were right there. Okay. Now he says this. Herein I give my advice. For as an expedient, for it is expedient for you who have begun before not only to do but also be forward a year ago see they wanted to do this like they did it a year ago they were, they're going to do it now and it says it's expedient for you well i looked up that word expedient and it means profitable yeah now that's you'd probably wish i read it that way this is profitable for you now if, if you read something like that that's one of them scriptures somebody's going to grab up and testify from now on See? But see, you have to know the word. You have to know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Yeah. Okay, for, then it says, do the performing of it. And then verse 12 says, for if there first be a will in mind, it is accepted according to what a man has and not according to what he has not. Now, I'll tell another little story of I heard of a man. Went to a service. And they was collecting up the offering and he didn't have any money. 
He had an offering envelope and he had a pencil. The pencil was there to write your name on it. He didn't have nothing to give. So he put the pencil in the envelope and licked it and put it in the offering. When he left that meeting and walked out the door, somebody gave him a $10 bill. Now, he didn't know anybody at this place. He's not knowing God yet. He grabs that $10 bill and runs back in there so happy and finds somebody's got a bucket and puts it in it. That man today gives away jet airplanes for God. A pencil. And we're going to say we don't have nothing. We'll take the nothing that he didn't have, put it in the envelope, and we'll get to that part. And I'm not going to read the NIV. I'll skip that for the time. Yeah, we've got about 10 minutes. Y'all want to hear some more? <laughs> How many people rather be here than in the best jail in Birmingham? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got them back. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. But this I say, he that sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he which sows bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, it's a truth that if you sow a lot, you're going to, res you're going to reap a lot. That's the truth. It, it talks about that in the Old Testament, too. But then it says, every man as he, as he purpose in his heart, so let him give. Everything's the heart. Yeah. Pastor Mark's been teaching about the heart ever since he started teaching. It's the heart. It's the heart. It's as you purpose in your heart. Not grudgingly or of necessity. Didn't I write somewhere what that meant? Grudgingly means unwilling. Don't give unwilling. I don't want to give that. I ain't giving to that. I'm going to tell you a way to get past that. Or of necessity. Necessity is state of fact, being necessary, more or less you have to do it in the intent. It's something that, you're hap that you have to do. Somebody talked you out of it or whatever. Don't give that way. Give as you purpose in your heart. And then I'm going to go here with it. Some people ask God, God, anybody ask God how much you want me to give? A man in the right house? Now, if we go by the word, if we go by the truth, the only time, well, there's two times. I'll tell one and Pastor Mark will tell one. He's already told it. Was when the, when, when the man came up and wanted to know how to inherit the kingdom of God, and Jesus told him, says, sell everything you got. That's the only time he told you how much to give. So don't ask God. Because <laughs> I'll tell you the answer you'll get. You'll get the Word. He can't give you anything but the Word. It says... God but don't ask your wife either. Every time I ask Jennifer, what do you think that we should be giving? She always doubles whatever it was I had in my heart. So I'm just going to start purposing in my own heart. That's what you do. <laughs> See, he's told you how to give as you purpose in your heart. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you have an all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. I, I just got to okay. stop there. Okay. Okay. Because here's the whole deal. Yes, God sir is able. Somebody say God is able. God is able. It's, it's, it's hard for me to sit still. God is able. And, and here's the problem. A lot of people don't believe that he is. They don't believe, they either don't believe he's able or they don't believe that he's willing. And so they'll never step out 
in this area. So your finances, your money represents your life. It represents your hard work. It represents your time. And, and, and so it says here, let's bring that scripture back up. God is able to make all grace. All all of it, everything that's in the kingdom of God, everything that's in him. He's already, he's already, your, your spirit man is hooked up to the kingdom of God. And he's able to make every bit of his grace and every bit of his supply to abound towards you. Why? For the purpose that you, somebody say me, that you always having all sufficiency in all things will be in a position to hear. Say, look, God... See, I told you I couldn't say Now, he's talking God, about money. God, listen, God abounded to you first so that you, it says, would be able to abound to others. We start from a place of victory. We start from a place of thank you, God, for supplying. We start from a place, God, you have blessed me to enable me to be a blessing to others. I'm not living my life trying to figure out how to get blessed. I operate from a place knowing that I am blessed so that I can turn around and abound to others. And that's the reason. That's the whole, that's the whole point of him establishing his covenant. And it doesn't have a figure on it. The only thing it has on it is how you purpose in your heart. If it's a penny, if it's a pencil, if it's a dime, if it's a dollar, it's how you purpose in your heart. He's able, I just purpose a penny. God says he's able to give you everything you need to give to some of the good works. No, all of them. Are you going to call God a liar and tell him, I don't have anything to give to this good work, God? I'm not calling God, I'm, if, if my heart only has a penny in it, it's going to get the penny. Because he said I'd have it to give. I'm never going to, I don't have it to give. I got to pay my light bill. I got to pay my car bill. But see, if you live this way, you won't have that thought because it'll be paid for. He says, he says he meets all your need. That's not plural. That means he meets them so fast you don't never have two at one time. I mean, ain't that right? It, God ain't dumb. He knows how to pluralize something. If he knows you're going to have a bunch of them, he'd have said, I meet all your needs. No, but he said need. Look it up. According to it's his a mindset. Amen. It's a mindset. You live there all the time. All sufficiency. And it said always. It didn't say 30% of the time. Why do you want to be a 30%er? Why do you want to be a 60%er when he offered you 100? Back to the book. Every good word. That's, I better not read that again. You'll get up and go. <laughs> As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness remains forever. His righteousness remains forever. Man, as you step into this, as you give to the poor, as, as you make this your mindset, this is the way I'm going to live my life, what you're doing is you're establishing the, the, the righteousness of God. Um, the Bible says in Rome, uh, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 5, it says that we, uh, to be mature, we have to be skillful in the word of righteousness skillful and that our senses our natural being it, it discerns good and evil by reason of use by actually stepping out and proving what is the good the perfect and acceptable will of god and and so what happens is not only will your righteousness and 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 it's jesus's righteousness he's made you righteous not only will your righteousness be established in your heart but the righteousness of god will now be established in the lives of other people as well your righteousness remains forever you impact the world for the kingdom of god you impact other people's lives Mm. And see, that righteousness remaining forever ain't when you get to heaven. That's right. It's down here in the earth. Yeah. It's forever. Yeah. Mindset. Do you have ears to hear? Children yeah. of the Most High God with His nature and His character living in His kingdom. Mm. Amen. Being enriched in everything in all bountifulness 
which causes through us thanksgiving to God, the things that you do. Now, don't blow your trumpet. Don't let your right hand know what your left but hand this is doing. But it says that we are enriched. Somebody say, I'm enriched. I'm enriched. enriched in everything. It did say everything, didn't in it? In every area, in every area of your life, enriched in everything yeah. to all bountifulness. Man, the language of God is over the top. Over the top. It's for you to... Uh, experience the abundant life. It's not to have to experience darkness. It's not to have to experience the curse. It's to experience life the way that he, and he wants you to be bountiful in every area of your life. And it produces not a focus on you. It produces thanksgiving to God. Father, I thank you that you've enriched me. Father, I thank you that you... Can we just lift our hands right now? Father, I thank you that you've blessed me. Father, I thank you for what you've done. Father, I thank you for my education. Father, I thank you for my job. Father, I thank you. That I, I thank you for, for my boss. Father, I thank you that you bless me every day. Father, I thank you that I'm, I'm enriched in everything, not because of what I do, but because of your kingdom and because of what Jesus did. Father, we give you thanksgiving this morning. We give give you praise this morning. We honor you. We acknowledge you right now in the name of Jesus because you are our source. You're the one that supplies every need. You're the one that has caused us to be able to, to not only you've abounded towards us, but to abound towards others in the name of Jesus. Come on, give him praise right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. And, and off of what pastor just said, not only abounded to you, but you can abound to others. I want to take us back to Mark 4, 24. And he said unto them, Take heed what you hear. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. And then he says this, and now he's talking about unto you that hear, more be given. How did you receive what was just said? Bountifulness to others. It's all about blessing your brother. God so loved that he gave. It's your nature now. He lives in you. It's not I that live, but it's Christ that liveth in me. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by his faith, yeah. not mine. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Mm. So let's do this. Let's uh, uh, finish up 2 Corinthians 9 right here, and then let's go ahead and, and, and bring it to a close. And then we can... Uh, I didn't get to the gravy. We didn't get to the gravy. No. Well, we'll we'll do that. We'll do that another time. Uh, That's a good thing about Sundays. We get to have other other Sundays to do things. Can I beg for five minutes? Five minutes. Give me five minutes. Yes, I'll sir. Just go right to the gravy. All right. It's gonna get to the gravy. Thank God for the South. Second Corinthians nine twelve. We just read 9-11, being enriched in everything, all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. That's us giving, all bountifulness. For the administration of this service not only supplies the want to the saints, but is abundant also in many thanksgivings to God. Now, the want to the saints. That's not just the church. It's the saints. Always look to your brother. While by the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for the professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ, unto the word that we're reading. And for your liberal distribution unto them and to all men. Now, he's telling you, make an experiment out of it. Is that what experiment means? Try something, test it out. It's almost like a theory, but a, 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 it could be proven. Make an experiment out of what, we're, what the Word's trying to show us today. Then it says this in 14, And by their prayers for you, which long after you. See, they don't know who did this because you didn't let your right hand know what your left hand's doing. They're thanking God for everything, but they know it came from down here, and they're praying for whoever that was, I hope, a hundredfold return instead of thirty. For the exceeding grace of God in you. Now, grace is pretty good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, how, how well do you think exceeding grace is? That's another level, ain't it? Yeah. 
Thank, verse, 13, verse 15 says, Thanks be unto God for this unspeakable gift. It's not talked about. This experiment that you're going to do in giving. That you're focused more on the way God says the reason He gives you power. He gives you the Word. The power is the Word to get wealth so He can further His covenant. So He can prove His Word is truth down here. It's an unspeakable gift. It's a gift. Do you want to walk in it? Yeah. Would everybody like to walk in that? Yeah, come on. You have to do this part up here. Give to every good work. Purpose in your heart. Don't put it... Look, the same used to be. They make money different today. You used to have the same paper that made a $100 bill that made a $1 bill. It just had two nothings on it. A alt is a nothing. But it sure did increase what you could do with it. Makes a difference where you put them alts. Put them at 100%. Amen. 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 So, it, yeah, let's give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. You know, uh, just looking at the rest of his notes, he was talking about, again, you know, purpose and all of that. We, and uh, Derek, come on up. Um, uh, and, and purpose is everything. You know, it's, it, you make a decision on how you're going to live your life. You make a decision on what's important to you in your life. You know, and, and um, I mean, the, the kingdom is so abundant. God wants to, uh, why is this important? Uh, uh, there's a number of reasons why this is important. And it's not just so that churches can, um, you know, take up money and build big buildings and things like that. That's not the, that's not the point. That's not, that's not the deal. The whole deal about this is, is because God gave authority. Listen to me. God gave authority to you, to man, here in the earth. He started that from the very beginning of creation. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 28, he gave man dominion over the earth, and God never changed. He never took that back. He never said, you know what, now I'm just going to have to, I'm just going to have to do it on my own. No, that's the reason why Jesus had to come into the form of a man so that he could, he could, re he could have man's authority because this is a physical realm. Now, the only way that the kingdom of God gets expanded in the earth is through you. Is through, is through the authority that is given to Jesus that we have now inside of the kingdom, see, and so we've got to allow the resources of the kingdom of heaven to flow uh, through our born-again spirit into our heart, out into our thinking, into the rest of our life. So we step out, and now the kingdom becomes manifested. This is all about his covenant. This is all about the rest of creation. This is all about evangelism. This is all about us just expanding what God wants to do. When you go up to somebody and say, look, um, you know, God told me, to, to, to buy your meal today, somebody you don't even know. See, we're not even talking about giving to the church. We're talking about God, God, God you, know, you know, you're in a drive through and you pay for the person that's behind you, you know, and just say, hey, you know, just tell them that God wanted to bless them. Or, or, or you're, you're at a restaurant and, and, and you go over and you just say, I, I, I want to bless you. Or, you. or you're behind somebody in line at the grocery store and, and, and you see that they're struggling. Say, here, let me be a blessing. And, and, and then that opens up the opportunity for you to have a conversation because light has now just been manifested. You are light. You are light. You, you don't hold on to the light. You demonstrate. Light is demonstrated. Light, light goes before you. And then the kingdom is manifested. And the king is glorified. And thanksgiving comes to God. Would you stand with me, please? Praise God. And so, you know, we... we we are a giving church. Most everybody here, you're givers. You know, you, it's 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 your it's part of your nature. But what I wanted to do with this is is to is to you know give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Make sure that we're not giving out of religious tradition. Make sure we're not giving because we're just supposed to. But but we reconnect with the heart of God in our life. 
that on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday that we're still thinking, how can I be a blessing to somebody else? How can I demonstrate Jesus here in the earth? I want my life. God, I don't, I, I, I don't want to have my hand out just trying to receive from others and seeing what other people can do for me but rather I want to be the one to have my hand out being a blessing to others because you've abounded towards me I want to abound to others and so now I'm living the rest of the week I'm not just waiting till I get here on Sunday morning to give to to the church thank God for that thank God we're blessed to be a blessing to our local church but I'm also looking for other areas and other people to be a blessing to that I want to make that a part of my priority, that my life will be defined by the fact that I'm a giver because God, that's your nature you gave. Would you just lift your hands with me and, 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 and let's, let's let, the, let the Lord just kind of work on our heart for just a moment and, and, and say, Father, I want, to, I want to be transformed by the renewing of my mind and, and, and allow your word to, to transform my thinking and my believing so that I get to prove what is that good and that perfect and acceptable will of God and that I'm going to live my life with purpose. I'm going to live my life purposing, not waiting to hear from you and what you're telling me to give, but rather I'm going to purpose to be a giver. I'm going to purpose, you know, that, that instead of being grudging about giving or, or giving out of necessity, that I can determine what my purpose is. I can determine to, to have a bountiful eye. I can determine to be a, a joyful and a cheerful giver. I can determine that because my cheer and my joy comes out of what you've blessed me with, but not only that, but also being a blessing to others. Parents get the most joy out of their children opening their gifts, not what they get for themselves. And and so we, that's why Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive. There's a joy that comes out of a lifestyle of being a giver. And you may say, well, I don't, I don't have anything that I can give. I've got too much debt. Find something. Skip a, skip, skip a McDonald's meal. Do something. Find an area. You know, it starts with a determination that that's the way you want to live your life. And so you just have to take a step of faith. Faith is a step into the unseen realm. It's doing something that is different than you've done before. You know, and, I'm, and, and so you have to make a decision. I'm going to do this. This is the way I'm going to live my life. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we receive that. Father, we thank you for abounding. Father, I even, uh, um, even though it's not taught for this purpose, we even just right now pray over our giving for today. And to this church, Father, we thank you that you have already abounded towards this ministry and towards this church to be able to be a blessing to others. And, and, and thank you that we have money in the bank. And thank you, Father, that we're able to help so many more people than we've been able to help in the past. But, Father, I thank you that we corporately together get to come every week and to give and to sow into your work and to sow into your kingdom and to expand your kingdom on the earth. Father, we let, let our giving this morning be a a reflection of your bountifulness towards us in the name of Jesus father we just thank you for it we thank you you do make all grace abound towards us that we would be self-sufficient in every area and that we would be positioned to abound to every good work and that out of our giving father that more thanksgiving goes to you more thanksgiving and that we prove and so right now father we're going to hold you to your word because you're that good we prove what is that good, that perfect and acceptable will of God? We say that we're going to abound in this grace also. Abound in this grace also. And that, Father, you multiply every seed sown in Jesus' name. For you are not mocked. For whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. And so, Father, we just thank you. That is just this ongoing cycle of abundance happening in our lives right now. And blessing coming into our lives. And favor favor. Yes, I declare that right now. Favor. Favor over you right now in the name of Jesus. That as you go to your place of work, that as you in the marketplace, just receive right now favor. That the favor of God 
it, it, it surrounds you. It compasses you about. The Bible says he compasses you about with favor as with a shield. That means, that means uh, your, your next sales appointment that you go into. There's favor that goes in there before you. God is already working on their heart, ready for them to say yes to the sale in Jesus' name. That when you, if you've had difficulty with your boss, that in the name of Jesus, that favor now goes before you as you've made a decision and you've purposed, man, I'm seeking first the kingdom of God and I receive the favor and the grace of God in Jesus' name. Favor is going before you in your relationships. Favor is going before you when you walk into the store. They're going to put stuff on sale. That's just a way that God's going to increase you more and more. Praise God that deals are going to come your way that you didn't know was possible. And, and, and so God's going to do things in ways that you didn't know. New jobs will come that, that you have favor as you go on those interviews in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Come on, give them praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Trust me for one more minute. I, want, I just want to give you something to think about. If you have ears to hear, it's a nugget. When Jesus was going to feed the 5,000, they just had a few fish and a few loaves. And he did what with the fish? He lifted them up to heaven and blessed them. Now I want you to put your paychecks in that hand. Because now know this. They never ran out of food till they quit giving. They had enough to feed everybody. They started out with 5,000, then they said men and women, and they came up with a, a bunch of people. But know this, they never ran out of food till they quit giving it out. The lady with the oil never ran out of oil till she quit pouring it out. You'll never run out of money, the grace of money, until you say, I can't. There's no such word as can't in my family. And we was taught that and it didn't have anything to do with it. It just had to do with being a man. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord.